A number of employees of the Dallas Community Action Agency have also been serving on various neighborhood councils and its governing bodies. The Office of Economic Opportunity figures this to be a conflict of interest, that is to serve on the board that governs the very job you are holding. Thus, they gave the DCA until December 1st to avoid these conflicts of interest, that these people would have to vacate one job or the other. There was an appeal, and the OEO extended the deadline until tomorrow, December 15th. The regional director, Mr. James Griffith, of the Office of Economic Opportunity, called a news conference today. He announced that he's going to Washington in January and will become a head of a new department up there. But during that news conference, I asked him about those resignations and whether or not tomorrow's deadline will be met. I talked with Bennett Miller. DCA, having this alleged conflict of interest, have resigned. There are no holdouts. Board Chairman George Zimmerman told me today that he has signed the letter and the documentation of the resignations is in the mail to the OEO. From the DCA headquarters on North Central Expressway, this is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News on the Move. The proposal before us is for a new turnpike just north of the present one, connecting Dallas and Fort Worth with a new regional airport. Unless something changes radically, it does not appear that such a turnpike will ever be built. Here's why. Opponents of the new turnpike say that if all else fails, they'll file legal action to keep the road from being built anytime soon, and that at the same time, they'll be applying pressure on the State Highway Commission to build a free road between Fort Worth and Dallas down the same corridor of land being proposed for the Trinity Turnpike. In opposing the toll road, they asked, why is it there are only two roads in the entire state of Texas where toll is collected, and both are in the Dallas and Fort Worth areas? It should be clearly noted, however, that it is mid-city residents and not Dallas citizens who are most concerned that Dallasites would be asked to support a third toll road. Every Dallas governmental agency which has been polled, and the Chamber of Commerce in Dallas as well, has voted in favor of the turnpike, or at least for supportive studies. Opponents say it is unthinkable that two such populous cities do not have the political clout, or whatever you call it, needed to convince the state to build a desperately needed highway without having to pay toll fees for it. The Turnpike Authority says, in effect, that that may be unthinkable, but it's the truth, that no interstate highway funds will be made available any time in the reasonably near future to build a free road, and, they remind, the need is at hand immediately. They also point to the delays which are always involved in building a state road and to the comparative speed with which a turnpike can be built. And they say, remember, nobody has to use the turnpike who doesn't want it. It's an option offered to the individual motorist and paid for only by those who use it. On the question of a referendum to allow the people of the area to determine whether they want a new toll road, such an election would not be binding on anyone, nor is it required by law. But there are those who suggest it would be the gentlemanly thing to do, to seek the will of the people, and then to use their guidance in making the final determination. Such a straw vote, it is suggested, might be taken either during the spring municipal elections or next fall in the general elections. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the move on the turnpike between Dallas and Fort Worth. Uh, to, to say one thing that uh, we've done the last two games, I think we ha haven't done before, was uh, we're hitting the line a lot quicker. They've got the backs uh, hitting the line real fast. So if we get any opening at all in there, the backs, like Calvin and Dwayne, are hitting it so fast. They're just through for five yards. And the linebacker, the linebacker will tackle them, but he drags them another couple yards, and we're getting big gains. I think it's been a line quicker. You know, I'm, I'm going to ask a question I'm going to get in trouble on because I don't know a zone block from any other kind of do that or what, but uh, I, have you been going to a zone block more and then running to daylight with the two backs? Uh, I wouldn't wouldn't say so. It looked like it against New York because they used a 4-3 defense, and a 4-3 defense is, you know, the, the basic defense, and we do zone a lot on that. We use the change-ups on the, uh, the odd defenses, on the guys in the gaps. Okay, let me ask you what a zone block is. Would you explain it for us? Oh, when you put your head right under the guy's chin and, uh, and move him anywhere you can. And a back seat reads your block and goes the opposite way of the way you take the defensive guy, hopefully. This is something, though, that you, you as a club don't do that often, right? Uh, we have, in the past, we've done a lot of passing in, in various games and we don't use it. It's, but lately we have been using it because I don't know why we've been using it more. I like it, though. <laughs> Why do you like it? Well, it just, uh, for one thing, it's easier, and it, you, you feel like you're more in the game. You, you, you like hitting the guy and moving him back. It's, 
it's not a pain thing. It's a, a primitive type of emotion it gives you to, to move somebody back and have the back rip through for five yards. You know, it's different than, than a finesse type blind. Well, we have, I haven't heard from Frank Howard. He's in, uh, up in the Green Bay, and uh, as, as a matter of fact, uh, for three years this time here, I haven't heard from Frank Howard. So this is nothing new, of course. Uh, he, uh, as I understand it, he's uh, up there and uh, negotiating business uh, for himself, and uh, other than that, I can't tell you anymore. I just hope that he's, he realizes that uh, he is getting a little older, I say this uh, with the same feeling and uh, uh, that I uh, thought about myself as an older player, that he is getting older, he's getting heavier, and that this is something that he should be all concerned with. And if I had a chance to talk to Frank Howard today, this is exactly how I would talk to him, that if he gets himself in real good shape, better shape than he was last year, I feel, certainly less weight than he was last year, that he could still have a, a real big year. Oh, the children have lots of fun. They uh, get lots of gifts, and we have parties for them, and different groups come in and entertain them, and Santa Claus comes to visit, and it's lots of fun. Well, does that make up for the fact that they're in the hospital and not at home? It seems to. A lot of the children really want to stay through Christmas Day so they can get gifts. How is it for you to be up here with the children at Christmas? Very enjoyable. Really is. Well, it's ridiculous to have people on the board of directors who are actively engaged in trying to destroy an agency. It just can't be permitted. Unless somebody can come up with an alternative to the Community Action Agency and to the War on Poverty, I'm not prepared to have it destroyed by one or more board members. I think certainly the, that we have begun to make both bank management and the Treasury Department aware that they're going to have to give more attention to this problem. I also think that the fact that investigations are being held 
has given a, a great deal of, uh, of confidence to the bank women because they know more about the rights they have and they are beginning to know that something can be done about an intolerable situation. We're here to review the area banks with over 50 employees. We're here to review their utilization of minority group persons as well as females and to establish goals and timetables to remit those areas that are deficient. We have met with various community groups since being here in Dallas, and tonight we met with WEAL, WHEEL, and this is a continuation of our community contact. Marcia, what action do you expect uh, these men to take? We expect them to require the banks to establish goals and timetables for affirmative action, for promoting women from within the banks, and for minority hiring. Did they give you any indication when you could expect some action on that? They didn't want to pinpoint it. They said it depended on the individual bank. It might be three months or might be as long as six months, depending on uh, where the bank is in their, their compliance reviews. Did you feel that they were willing to work with you or that they were trying to placate the, the, the women's movement? No, we felt they were willing to work with us. Before coming up here to the 16th floor, and he tells me that a letter is being drafted right now will be sent, with, sent to me today, stating that the Dallas Community Action Agency has complied with the directive from the regional office. How many resignations were tendered? Bennett uh, told me between 25 and 30. Will this now clean up the problems between the OEO and the DCA? All of the problems, I don't know. Certainly one that we were quite concerned with in the last couple of weeks. Uh, we have an inspection report coming in from the inspectors who were here in Dallas uh, last week, which is not complete. And of course, we'll have to match the two up and see if they do fit. But it, it certainly sounds like a step in the right direction toward the type of cooperation we were looking for. Will you continue to monitor to ensure this doesn't happen in the future? Yes, sir. In what way has Mr. Price uh, sought to destroy it? Well, it's been a point of controversy continually. He, uh, he, he's the one that promoted the election or appointment of Clay's mother to the board, who absolutely has zero support, as we said before, in the target areas. Uh, if I may be permitted a cliche, he runs around like Little Caesar trying to organize votes, and uh, he just doesn't permit the democratic process to, to happen at these board meetings. With these several people asking for his resignation, do you really think he will? Probably not. He likes the publicity he's getting, which unfortunately I'm giving him more. But that's the name of the game, I guess. Tarrant County Commissioners are due for a pleasant surprise come Monday morning. They'll hear what has been, until this report, super secret findings to the effect that the hospital district is making money. Channel 8 News learned today that low expenditures and high revenues combine to save John Peter Smith Hospital $655,000 this year. Now that kind of profit for a community hospital is almost unheard of. The reasons seem to be twofold. First, JPS is claimed to have excellent management. One result of that is that emergency and other services are far above the standards of the typical charity institution. Citizens who can afford Harris, St. Joseph, and other hospitals prefer, in some cases, the service at JPS. Secondly, hospital board member Jack Bean has instituted a new type of financial reporting and collection system that seems to be helping the situation. The whole report is surprising, especially considering that massive construction's taking place here and that the board had to appeal to the Tarrant County commissioners for more money earlier this year. Although the budget for the next five years is pretty well set, if the savings in hospital operations continue to mount, there could eventually mean a reduction in the tax load for Tarrant County residents. I'm Jay Lewis at John Peter Smith Hospital for Channel 8 News on the Move.